Uh, look, he wasn't playing every game uh, for Frank, so it's a little bit different for him. Um, he's played in the last three matches, to be honest, he's done well. It suits him, the three at the back, it gives him the license to, uh, that he doesn't have to recover that much area, you know, when they lose the ball. Um, and we all know about Chun Jel, uh, you know, he, he, tactically he's, 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 uh, he's somebody that, that studies the game really well. You know, he's, he's coached on a high level with big players, you know, with big players, don't forget that. So he's coming to the door a little bit different than Frank, you know. So, uh, and we all know how it is as, as football players when you're sitting there in, in, in a dressing room and a manager like that comes in, hmm. you know, the first few weeks, it's, it, it is, you know, hey, I need to prove myself here. So and I think that's what, they're, that's what they're doing. I think he's proved himself on the, on the training field, obviously. It was really interesting to hear Jorginho talk there about his message is clear. It's not too complicated. And the, the cleverer footballers with the highest IQ on the pitch will play. And Jorginho is certainly one of those. He dictates the play. He dictates the tempo of the play. He understands what the manager wants. Yeah. And he applies it onto the pitch. And I think Kovacic alongside him also understands. Played at some of the highest... They play big games, both of them, all over Europe. They understand the game. They understand tactics of the game. It's not all about getting Kante on the pitch, who can eat up the ground and go and roll someone over and win the ball back as quick, quick as possible. Sometimes, he had, when he came on, he, he nearly, nearly hurt him. Mm. Ch uh, Chelsea yeah. tonight, Kante. Kept turning over position at the wrong time. Whereas Eugenio and Kovacic, every time the ball in, went into them, Move it was the like ball. the reference. They kept the ball. They knew when to speed it up. They knew when to slow it down. And I think that's a clear message from Thomas Tuchel there. He's gone with the three. Everyone knows their jobs. So when you come off the pitch, they know if they've done a good job or not. They know if they've played well. Some of them still need to improve. Timo Werner needs to improve. I'm not sure what his role is at the moment. I think they were far better when they got a big guy up there, maybe a Tammy Abraham or Giroud. Um, but they're going to have to persevere with Timo Werner and Havertz. They paid a lot of money for him and he's going to have to integrate them into the side, but not... Um, don't, he cannot put them in if it's going to mean that they start losing football matches because, like I said, he needs to win. He needs to get out there in the top four, but he's on track to be able to do that. That's interesting. Just for clarification, where did you come in the IQ test list? <laughs> uh, my IQ was very good. Yeah. I, I, think I, I think I lacked the uh, mobility a little bit, but I think I understood what the manager wanted and I applied it. Share with the pundit on share with the player. <laughs> Talking of Timo Werner, he was involved in the penalty incident. There wasn't any debate about this, Jimmy, was there? I don't know no. what the IQ test was on this one. No, but, uh... but and this is, this is typical Werner, his run, getting behind the defence. And he's very smart, as, as Tim uh, uh, said earlier. You know, he knows it's coming, put his foot in front of uh, Dyer's foot. And what Dyer is doing is... is it's diabolical here. Uh, why? You don't have to do it. He can't have a shot away. All the world is still protecting here. It's a, it's a penalty. Oh, you no, you no. look there. That, that, that angle there was perfect from Timo Werner. He sees it. He doesn't even try to tow the ball away. All he knows he has to do is get his foot that side of Eric Dyer and let him kick him. And it's exactly what he did. And he would look like... I mean, I always think when he steps up, he's never going to miss. Where are like, you on penalty styles, Tim? I matter? love this one. Anyone what, what ends up in the back of the net, I'm really pleased with. <laughs> <laughs> and, and you're right. Yeah. <laughs> as simple as that. Just put it in the back of the net. 12 from 15 from the spot for Jorginho. That was the goal that won it. Let's get some more Chelsea player reaction. Here are the thoughts of Mason Mount. Mason, was that a deserved win? You had pretty much good control in, in the majority of the game. Yeah, um, I think we had a lot of control in the first half. I mean, we should have scored more in the game. Um, I had a couple chances. We had a couple other chances where... We should be way more clinical in front of goal and, and that's something that we need to work on, uh, me, myself as well. Um, but no, I think we had, we had good possession throughout the game. It's always tough to come here and control it throughout because they go forward, they push for the goal. Um, they knew there was one nil down at the end, so they're trying to get an equaliser. So it always makes it tough to kind of have that control throughout. But um, no, I thought we played very well. Yeah, but tactically, it looked like you had the edge from the start. You were overloads, wing backs pushing on. It was causing the Spurs a lot of trouble. Yeah, that's, that's what we kind of looked at before. Um, it's the, the, the style the manager um, wants us to play. Um, 
and it's been it's been working well. So um, yeah, it's something that we need to keep working at. Um, it's new, um, it's different for for some of some of us players, um, especially me today. Maybe playing a bit as a kind of false nine and then dropping into the ten and, and helping the midfield out. So um, we're all learning, um, but yeah, it's obviously going well so far. And Thomas is going to keep changing this system. He said before the game, he's going to try different different tactics, different mm. place people in different places. Yeah, and and that's obviously. Um, a positive for us and, and it makes it difficult for any team we play against they don't know what we're going to come with um, so yeah we're obviously working on it day in day out in training um, different formations different tactics and um, yeah we're just um, focused on trying to keep getting better and better and, and getting them wins and maybe just a bit more killing instinct is that what he's going to say to you yeah um, I saw you go down the tunnel with him and got yeah, no, the shoulder said, what was the discussion there <laughs> <laughs> no, I just said I, I should have had one or two definitely and um, we spoke about it at half time as well just be clinical and and go with a purpose and, and want to score I mean uh, I didn't have my shooting boots on today that so um, something that I work on during the week and um, it's a bit different I've been playing a bit deeper so to being up in the box a bit more I, I need to work on that finishing so hopefully it can come that was really insightful uh, about the change in style from one manager to the other. He started more games under Frank Lampard than anybody else. He didn't start Thomas Tuchel's first, but he's going to start plenty, isn't he? Under he's going to start plenty. How about how refreshing to see him and to hear what he's got to say. You know, what a, what a lovely kid, but also lots of uh, ability he has. And interesting how we, uh, how we play today and the position, you know, false nine, number 10, helping the defence out. He's got so much more to come, that kid. So much more to come. We were talking earlier, you know, off the show. You know, he's rushing at time a little yeah. bit. His, his, his last little bit to score because he's so eager. He, he just wants to, uh, to prove himself so much. And he, and he doesn't have to. He just has to take one step back and it will come itself. He's got so much natural talent, you know. And uh, yeah, nice to hear him speak. Yeah, he's coming through a lot of stick. Nice amount, unfairly. Yeah. You know, because Frank Lampard was there, Joe Edwards, uh, Jody Morris from the academy, start brainwashing people, perhaps up higher, that he's playing because he's the favourite, he's the teacher's pet. And let me tell you, it'll be Thomas Tuchel's teacher's pet as well, because he's such a good player. And he does exactly what the manager wants him to do. No matter if you play him there as a false nine, or as an eight, or as a six, he will try to do yeah. what the team needs. And he'll work hard every day in training to try and achieve it. I'll tell you who he teaches pet of Gareth Southgate, the England manager as well. I mean, the kid's mm. doing something right. It's not because of his favouritism. It's because he's a good player, a top draw player. And they ended up with, today, four academy kids. Now, everyone thought too cool would come in, get rid of all the academy kids. I was worried for them. And I thought he would just play the price tags, just play the superstars who were coming into there. No. Four of them played today, played a huge part in that football match today. Yeah, you're right. That is unfair on Mason Mount, isn't it? With yeah. the performances he's put in and the way you hear him speak yeah. in interviews like that. But we that. talked about the intelligence. I mean, that is an intelligent footballer. You can see his brain ticking over when he plays. He doesn't only move for himself for self-indulgence. He moves for others as well. He yeah. creates space of his movement. He understands when to stand still, when it's needed. Whatever job he does, he does it for the need of the team. And it's not always about self-indulgence and this is what I can do to make Mason Mount better. It's what I can do to make Chelsea Football Club better. How invaluable are those type of players to a manager? Oh, you don't, they don't come... They don't fall you, off you, trees. Yeah, you, you don't see a lot of them. Uh, it is so hard to get that mentality, mm. that understanding, that knowing, hey, I need to step out two, two yards here so that... Uh, the other one has got a little bit more space and doing that as well for the team. Not a lot of, of players are prepared to do that. Mm. You know, it's that understanding and sometimes, you know, um, it's forgotten. But he has that. He, he has that. And, and as I said, he has got so much more to come. So much more to come. Jimmy, do you think he's a, he does that the what's needed for the team because he's from the academy and he cares so much and when you cut him in half he bleed blue? I, I think I think he just loves football a lot. I just think he is a football person and that is what you need to do to win. And I I don't think that it is obviously he loves Chelsea to bits, mm. but I don't think that he is doing it because of that. I think he's doing it because that's his belief. That's how you have to play football. Mm. You know, I think that's the perception that I get from him. Do it the right way. 
give your 100% on the ball, off the ball. Yeah. You know, and a lot of people don't talk about him off the ball. He does so much work off yeah. the ball, you know, getting that ball back. Not a lot of people give him that credit. You know, he's, he's, got, a, he's got still a long way to go, but he's getting there. Okay, he talked there quite interestingly about how training was different, the different methods, what the manager wants to do. He's only been there yeah. nine days. You've had another look at them tonight. Yeah. Where's, what have you noticed in the difference in a Thomas Tuchel, Chelsea to Frank Lampard? Well, well, Thomas, I've heard him talk before about five and five. We attack with five and we defend with five. And you see it here, the five, and they freely go. They interchange positions. And they, go, they, and they know they've got the security of the five at the back there. Six even with the goalkeeper, Mendy. And then they just, if you were one of them five, Jimmy, you always think, well, I'm free to go. I haven't got to worry about what's behind you. Sometimes yeah. you see players running forward and you think, oh, what am I leaving? But they know, because he coaches them on a training pitch, they know if there's five forward, they sit and they protect and they stop the counter. And it's exactly what they do in that little box there. It is, it is actually quite interesting because that is his belief. And Mourinho's belief is totally different. He wants them fullbacks to go back. Now, his players will have more strength to go that way because they are allowed to, they work off the ball, but they know that here and there they can take their, 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 their rest to go again because they have, will have five behind the ball at all time. You know, so in a way, we would call it back in the day, he, they are cheating, you know, yeah. but they're actually not cheating no. because they know, you know, those players in advanced areas are our outlets. Spurs didn't have those outlets in the first half. They didn't have them because their fullbacks were all the time at the back. It's actually really interesting to see the two yeah. different styles. It's really important to be brave in possession. And when you get good possession through Jorginho, through Kovacic, then it allows the wide players to push on. And then it's sending the Tottenham defenders back. Yeah. And then you win the numbers game. Then you've got them in their own half and you're playing the ball around. Overplaying at times, Chelsea, certainly yeah, in the yeah, first half. Yeah. But they had the counter-attack on the second half. If they had more quality and more clinical in their finishing, Jesus. they would have scored more goals in the second period. But that is only three games with Thomas Tuchel. There's very positive sides for Chelsea fans. If he can do that within two weeks of being in the football club, he's not going to get bored coaching these lot. It's like teaching someone to do something new. These boys, I think he's, this is the biggest club he's ever been at. I've said that before. Listen, Paris Saint-Germain. They had two world-class players, Mbappe, Neymar, and yes, they had very good players. I don't think he's had a squad of players like this Chelsea yeah. squad. Not quality in every I was, position. I, I was just going to say that on the bench, have you seen what is on the bench today? Jurgen Klopp it, said, didn't he, the day he arrived, he, yeah. he said, 